Hello drone racers. This once again is the Fly Egg 130. I reviewed it very recently and it was kind of okay, but one of the things I said is it really needs Betaflight 3.2. And several people corrected me and said it is available, they just renamed it. So in this video, we are gonna update this to Betaflight 3.2 update BL Heli on it, and then do some additional flight testing because the other thing that I did besides being able to update that is I also now have it set up to work with my Free Sky radio. I did a video where I set up this iRange module and now it will work with the SM. We set this up for that in that video. So now we're gonna do some actual flight testing with it. I think it's gonna fly a whole lot better this way. Okay, I'm in beta flight and the first thing I'm gonna do is take a command line backup. Just do a dump and that will, save all of that and I'm gonna save this to a local file on my machine just so I've got it. So that's saved and I like to have that but I also like to, since I'm recording, go through the configuration because I found it's actually easier to review the recording afterwards and make sure I match the settings than to try and parse through the config. So we will just go through ports. See I'm on UART3 for Serial RX. Under configurations, I am under multi-shot. I do a motor stop enabled, it's four by four. I'm on Spectrum 2048. I do have the LED strip turned on. There's no current meter, but I do have VBAT, that, which I have turned down just a little bit. PID tuning, I have turned up, but I plan on totally ditching these PIDs and switching to default beta flight PIDs. Receiver, I am on TAER, but I will check all of this again afterwards. Modes, I set that up to what I want it to be, so I can just reset that up next time. And there is no OSD, so that's sad. So last time I looked for just Pico blocks and it wasn't there. So people told me it's called FF Pico blocks. So thank you for everybody that let me know about that. I am just going to try and load here and see if it will flash without me doing anything. Oh good, this is an easy one. So you don't have to boot with any pins or don't have to change anything else. DFU just came up immediately and it's flashing. So I like the easy ones. If you have a problem with this, I will link up in the corner to my 3.2 update for going through the firmware process and getting that all set up and working. This will probably be exactly the same for you. So you can follow those steps. Now it's connected and we'll double check the version 3.2 and it works, I'm connected. Now we're gonna have to go through and probably set up everything from scratch. Now under ports, oh no, it remembered that. Uh, it's definitely not a brushed motor. We were on multi-shot. I might try some of the other options later. Okay, so we're gonna change this to what they had it set to, four by four. Accelerometer is on. Board I don't think was rotated. Personalize. Fly egg, even though there's nowhere to see this, unfortunately. We're serial based, but with Spectrum 248. I will turn on anti-gravity, dynamic filter. I think that'll be it for this page. Now under power and battery, which is separate, I'm gonna turn down the cell voltage warnings because those are too high and they go crazy. Save that. PID tuning, I'm gonna leave these to the defaults. So we're gonna see what happens and those are on 0.8 and they've turned the whole thing up. Oh, I like the new profile, that looks good. So I'm gonna try it with these. Receiver, I'll check in a minute when I connect the battery. Modes, I want arm on switch one. Angle, horizon. I want angle down here. Horizon's in the middle. On aux two, these are the same things I always do. Beeper on aux three. And air mode moved all the way to the bottom. I want that for horizon and acro mode on switch two. Okay, so now I need to grab a battery and test the motors. Everything's good, I have the battery connected. The one thing that I had to do was change the stick minimum. It was set to 1050 right here. And looking at the throttle stick here, I'm at 1090, so I had to increase that a little bit. Otherwise, when I tried to arm, it just beeped at me. I changed that, and then now when I arm it, I work, and the motors turn. I check to make sure they all turn the right way. So that should be good to go. Okay, I'm now here in the old BL Heli suite because I couldn't get the new one, the Chrome version, to connect through this. It works fine on some of the others, but it wouldn't work on this one, so I am on port 14. I have selected Clean Flight as my option here, so if you're going following through, make sure you select that, connect, and it will connect right up, and then I will read the setup. It goes through and reads the setup. It tells me I am on 16.5, which isn't that old, but we're gonna go ahead and 
go through and update them. So we are going to just flash BLHeli across the board with 16.6. So there we go. Yes, I want to flash it. So just keep following the steps until you get through all of the ESCs. So there we go. Now we're on 16.6. Hopefully that's all it takes. Now we'll go back to beta flight, make sure everything works, and then we'll put on some props and test it. Okay, so I kind of consider this the first real test of the drone because it should perform much better now. And oh, that feels nice already. I have not turned on any of the dynamic filters, changed the filters much around yet, but I just want to test some uh, line of sight here, just like I did last time. I only have a couple batteries to play with, so I'm going to try horizon mode now. Oh, the flips work a whole lot better. Uh, still not as fast as I think it should be, but it's a whole lot better in horizon mode. And uh, yeah, that looks that looks really good. It's still the thing I love about this is how quiet this drone is. I know I did this last time, but my gosh, it's virtually silent. It, it just doesn't make any noise at all. Okay, so now we'll do a quick uh, rate mode test. You know what, even without changing the filters, it feels pretty good. Oh, that looks, oh, well, it's just way better. One, it's the radio I'm used to. The performance just feels better. 3.2 is better, and my eyes are all screwed up. I need to land. All right, so I'm going to come in, check the motor temperature, and see if I need to change. Really, I don't even think I need to make changes, but I'm going to anyway. So read this tuning tip. It says it's important to verify motor temperature. Do that. Do not do what I'm going to do here. My motors were just a little bit warm, but I'm going to crank it up all the way to try it. So if you were doing this, try it, changing it to PT1. Fly it for a pack. Make sure the motors aren't hot. If they aren't, then come here, change this to zero, save it, fly it, make sure your motors aren't hot. If they're good, come here to notch filter two, change it to zero, save it, fly it, make sure your motors aren't hot. If you're good there, come here to filter settings, change the D-term uh, notch filter frequency to zero, save it, fly it, make sure your motors aren't hot. If you're good there, you're good. I'm going to skip all that because I'm a reviewer and my best case scenario is these motors catch on fire because that would be an awesome video. But if you're doing this at home with what your model, go through those one step at a time. I'm going to go to the extreme just to try it so we can see and move on with the review. Okay, so let's see how it does now. We have everything fully enabled. I have a little jitter. Wow, it seems a whole lot faster. I'm su surprised how much shake I've got. Um, performance wise the camera is still probably the weak point on here man it feels so much better than it did the other day though part of that is my radio part of it is it's just a whole lot better performer now on 3.2 I still got a little I could it could use some pid tuning still which is really unusual for 3.2 but oh where am I holy cow kill the motors well, let's go see if they're hot we need to check that anyway so I'm gonna call these motors warm they're warm they're not hot though I didn't have any problem holding on to them and I did totally mutilate a prop but I'm just gonna bend it back instead of going to change it because my kids are hungry and they want to eat they don't want me to fly oh man I like this now this is this is a really nice flyer now um, comparison to the leader 120 which at the moment you can get them both for $93.99 if you pick the DSM-2 version which is what I've got here Oh, it's a tough one. I I miss the OSD. That's the main problem I have here. Um, ooh, that was ugly. So, yeah, not having an OSD, and I think maybe the camera is a little bit better on the OS on the Leader 120. Just a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. Um, so I'm going to try one more battery. Let's, let's fly one more battery and I'll, I'll make a call. See, there's the problem. See, I'm over here somewhere and you can't see me at all. There, if I get behind the pole, that's just not great. There, it's fine. Okay, so let's do a little bit of a range test too. Because this is a DSM-2 and I'm not used to that as much. And I've still, I'm at 100 meters and have no problem at all. And I have good video signal and have good control. Uh, video's breaking up a little bit. I'm going to come back. But I have absolutely no loss of video no issue there at all uh, I think uh, just a lot of problems I had last time with it were due to the radio I was using it's ancient I've had it for 10 years my gosh but now that I'm using my radio and that was also a good test of the module that I put in if you want the spectrum version this uh, has diversity on the one built in 
it seems really good and uh, man for under a hundred bucks it's a steal this thing is really a steal uh, same thing though for the leader the code didn't work the other day it's supposed to be fixed maybe hopefully by the time you watch this the code will be fixed could you go wrong with this thing no I don't I don't think you're gonna be wrong if you do either one of them really on 3.2 they're both they're both great flyers I think I like the leader a little bit better it, it feels a little more stable um, it also might have a better chance for supporting 3s maybe I think 3S will burn this thing out. So if you want to fly it long term, this is probably not the right one. Really happy with it though. Look, Betaflight 3.2 is just magic. It makes everything so much better. Just just makes everything better. Everything that wasn't quite good six months ago is just amazing now on 3.2. It just solved all of our issues, especially with these micros. It helped the five inches too but especially helped with these uh, these little micros that just had a lot of issues. And dynamic filters make the world right. Yeah, I, I am definitely happy with this now. I was not really happy with it the other day, but I totally blamed it on me. I thought it was my problem, and I'm very glad to see that I was right. This is, uh, this is a great little flyer now, after the changes that I made. Ooh, yeah. It's not that small, but it's really hard if I hit it. One of the key things here, though, is good batteries. So the battery that came with it was just garbage, and a couple good batteries make make a world of difference so i've got a link for the ones that i used i got off amazon also got some pulse batteries on the way i've tried a couple of those now and i've been really happy so um feel free to give those a shot as well so yeah the range is good all right but it's lowish we're gonna call it lowish. Yeah, that is night and day better. Between the additional control I get using the Free Sky, simply because I know it better and I'm able to set it up better, and Betaflight 3.2, and probably the BL Heli update too, that certainly didn't hurt anything. This is a really, really nice flyer now. It does a good job. It's not amazing simply because of the lack of OSD, but for the price right now, it's outstanding. Any under $100 quad, if it flies this well, I'm going to rank it as a very, very good deal. I've actually found I really like these props. I have beat the heck out of these. I bent one of them in half, and I just straightened it out, and it was fine. And it comes with two sets. That's probably plenty. The, the one downside I've had is I actually do have to screw them on with these motors. It doesn't get a tight fit like the leader. I haven't actually screwed these blades on. I've just pressed them on, and they work just fine. But here are my two favorite 120 models. I'm still going to give a little bit of the edge to the leader. I think it flies a little bit nicer, but this is way prettier with the aluminum it's got on it. It just looks a lot nicer. And I haven't even really taken advantage of it, but this transmitter will go up to 100 milliwatts. So I still got almost 200 milliwatts with it, and I probably could have made it, but I chickened out. And with the dual receiver, uh, that was really good. Yeah, so this is with the coupon code, if it's working, it's the same price, but you have to add a receiver. So this is still going to be more versus the DSM. If you get the FreeSky or FlySky version, it is a little more. I should say that's in the fall of 2017. I have no idea what it's going to be priced when you watch this, but try the co coupon code anyway. So if you found this useful, leave a like down below and comment with what I missed this time because everybody was super helpful last time letting me know about beta flight and that made a humongous difference. What else do you want to see on this? Do you think it's worth changing the pigtail maybe? I, it, it, battery output would definitely be better if it was an XT30, but you're going to have to take it all apart and get some larger wires in here because these wires are tiny. I just noticed, look at that. They actually did zip tie down this cord and that's, that's a little nice extra attention to detail. That will help let the string relief off of this so it doesn't come off. Huh, that's a nice little thing. It does look like on this one it would be really easy just to crack this top open and put new wire leads on there with an XT30 and it would, it would give it more power. So until next time, remember, 
I tried to think of a really funny egg joke, but I couldn't come up with one. So I'm going to leave it for you guys in the comments to post one for me. Thanks.